The Chinese President Xi Jinping has today been in Hungary on what is the final leg of his European tour. That's his first visit to the continent in five years. Well, the tour began in France uh, before it took President Xi to Serbia and from there to Budapest, where he received a very enthusiastic welcome, which included military honours. Well, ties between China and Hungary are described as being, and I quote, at their best in history. Well, frequently at loggerheads with Brussels, the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has increasingly been looking eastward, seeking closer ties with Russia and China. Well, let's get some more analysis on that. We can speak to historian and political scientist Rana Mitter, who is the uh, ST Lee Chair in US-Asia Relations at the Harvard Kennedy School. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, what do you read into President Xi's choice of France, Serbia and Hungary for a three-nation uh, European tour? I mean, do you think uh, some of the reports that we've read are true? This is part of an attempt to challenge unity on the continent? I think there's an element of that, yes. France is chosen because some time ago, President Macron stroke, spoke about the idea of strategic autonomy. In other words, the idea that Europe, presumably led by France in this case, might find a different path from the United States. And I think this is something that was particularly thought of as important at a time when President Trump was in office and more openly hostile to some aspects of European policy than President Biden. Uh, Hungary is on the list because Viktor Orban, the prime minister, is regarded really as the most China-friendly leader inside the EU bloc. Uh, there's even actually a branch of a major Chinese university, Fudan University, in Budapest these days is a mark of that sort of friendship. And Serbia, of course, is outside the EU orbit. And there's a sense in which China feels that the periphery of Europe, as judged from Brussels or from Berlin, may be an easier place for it to use infrastructure, funding, and other aspects of what it does well to try and create new friends and, again, separate it from the uh, orbit either of Brussels or of Washington. So it sounds like you think there is some truth and some, some, something to be made of these U.S. concerns, about which there have been a few reports in the last 24 hours or so, that Russia is trying to build this, uh, what's been described as an axis of anti-Western leaders uh, with the countries we, we've just been talking about, not notably Hungary and, and Serbia. Yes, I think France is far less likely to be the case, which, of course, still sits very much at the centre of European policy. I think there are two aspects, briefly, in which there's some hope that Russia and China might be able to drive a wedge from their point of view. One is very much uh, an ideological one, the idea that being told what to do, as they see it, by Washington, in particular threats to liberal democracy, are something that they find that they don't really want to hear. And Serbia has been quite loud in terms of saying that its relationship with Russia is not going to be affected by what Washington and says. China would take very much the same view that European countries should take their own path. The other element is economic. It's worth noting that both Hungary and Serbia have relatively weak economies. And by providing infrastructure, by providing loans, by providing uh, elements such as that university I mentioned, China shows that it can actually bring material advantages to some European countries as well. And that's often going down quite well with the political elites in those countries. Of course, uh, Europe is a huge trading bloc and a huge trading partner for China as well. Uh, and were Brussels to find it uh, unpalatable, the idea that uh, China was trying to create this axis of anti-Western sentiment in the east of Europe, I mean, couldn't Europe respond in kind and uh, perhaps uh, take measures of its own that might uh, perhaps make China think twice about interfering on, on our continent? Um, I think it's certainly the case that there is a more robust attitude being proposed, particularly by the Commission President, President van der Leyen, who has spoken out quite strongly against what she regards as political interference. Part of the problem is that one other major actor, Germany, and particularly Chancellor Schultz, have made it clear that they regard the economic links between Germany in particular and Europe in general and China as too valuable to damage, particularly, of course, in the context where there's no longer cheap fossil fuels from Russia coming in to the German economy. So I think one the element you've talked about is absolutely right. It's fair to say that individual European countries are sometimes undermining the idea that there is a unified European pushback against Chinese attempts to try and change politics or economics on the European continent. I mean, it does seem, doesn't it, like China is doing some of Russia's dirty work for it? Well, in public, China will be very, very firm about the fact that it is uh, making sure that it does not break any international sanctions on banking or in other areas where there, um, there, there have been measures laid down. But I think there's a lot of suspicion that in some areas of what's sometimes called dual-use technology, in other words, things that could be either for civilian or military use, China is supplying Russia with things that Russia can then turn 
its own hand to using for military purposes. So while China wouldn't do that openly, I think it's fair to say that behind the scenes, there's a certain amount of partnership between the two. Uh, and just lastly, I mean, Hungary and China have become increasingly important trade and investment partners. Um, I mean, dozens of cooperation agreements, well, more than a dozen cooperation agreements were signed on this trip alone. I mean, it's a very different dynamic, isn't it, between Budapest and Beijing and the rest of Europe and Beijing. I mean, just tell us a bit more about that. Yes, I think that what really Hungary wants to indicate on its part is that it has its own autonomy. It's a relatively small country in the European uh, mix, and it doesn't want to be seen as being dominated by France or Germany within the EU. So it's sort of a show of independence in that sense. But there's also a temperamental similarity between less liberal European countries, such as uh, Hungary, and the way in which China is pushing a more authoritarian view of the world. Now, let's not go too far. Hungary is not China. It's still a democratic country even if some of its uh, civil society has been uh, constrained in recent years. But there's clearly a sort of meeting of minds between Xi and Orban, which is just not the case between Xi and Macron or even Xi and Olaf Scholz. And that does make a difference, I think. OK, well, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to speak to us. Historian and political scientist uh, Rana Mitter uh, at the uh, Harvard Kennedy School. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us on France 24. Thank you.